As part of the Beef and Lamb New Zealand North Canterbury Farming for Profit program, we've come to Marshdale with Agricom to have a look at their diverse pasture species cropping program. Um, and I've got Alistair Moorhead here who's going to have a bit of a chat to us about the importance of species selection in these diverse pasture species. What to sow, why to sow it, and maybe what not to sow. Al. Hi, thanks Sarah. So we've just uh, finished our field day here and uh, approaching mid-April and we're in a complex diverse pasture that we created as part of a, uh, of a diverse pasture project that involves five different farmlets, all um, with elements of diversity, uh, including a 50 year old uh, pasture that has been untouched and then has naturalized over time. So I've got a piece of paper here with all num names on it because actually we put in about 28 species. And for me, uh, it's probably easier to go through the list and, and uh, look at what's around us a little bit too, but to understand why we chose to do what and what elements we came to play here. And then at the end, uh, acknowledge things that we definitely wouldn't do again, both from the financial inputs of putting them in, but also the environmental damage that they may have occurred with time. So this pasture has been sown with the equivalent of 18 kilograms of ryegrass, but with about eight or so grass species sown at very low rates. And what I mean by 18 kgs of ryegrass, I'm using that to, for you to visualize the quantity of all the grasses if they added up based on seed size how much equivalent ryegrass we might have put in so as an example we've got only four kilograms of perennial ryegrass in here uh, a diploid perennial uh, we put four kgs of a tetraploid hybrid in here which again because high, uh, tetraploid seed is bigger four kilograms that's half the rate that the diploid was that's not an annual it's a hybrid it will last over time but it adds extra um, speed to the start of this but at a very low sowing rate. Uh, we have four k's of tall fescue in here. And again, a seed size very similar to perennial ryegrass. We have three k's of meadow fescue, uh, four k's of atom prairie grass, and that is a, a shorter term species with a very big seed, but it's also a natural reseeder as well. And it's quite common. In fact, you can see a little bit here where it's already thrown a seed head in its first season, and, and that will start a regeneration phase as well. We have a little bit of gala grazing brome in here as well, and timothy. So these are the species uh, that make up the grass base. This pasture was designed to be a genuine perennial pasture, but with uh, a cover crop of species that might have other attributes. However, that's only in the first part. The second part definitely is the legumes that support this pasture. So we're looking at uh, uh, red clover. I see that as a powerhouse of this sort of opportunity and system and already it's showing up as impressive. The other legume that is showing up from day one uh, to be extremely impressive is uh, lucerne. And lucerne is, uh, uh, content here is outstanding. So we've got four k's of red clover. Uh, we have three k's of lucerne. And I believe due to the slow establishment of the, of the low sowing rates of the grass species, every kg of that lucerne seed has germinated and is contributing really strongly inside the first uh, season. Uh, we've got three white clovers, a large leaf, a, a medium large leaf and a small leaf type. And uh, we have a crimson clover, a balanza clover, and uh, these are annual clovers, both of which that have reseeded inside the stand because of this uh, lax start. Um, both of them are creating longevity through reseeding and contributing to mass in the spring and the nitrogen cycling coming from the legumes. Uh, we've put in some lotus and today we've had an exercise about finding the plants and the lotus is extremely hard to find to start with and I would emphasize on the scale of this mixture the lotus is very expensive so you need to have quite a lot of faith that it works for you before you probably would want to invest in that. Uh, what am I looking at? Strawberry clover, another very resilient uh, white clover like legume uh, designed for wet hard soils that get very dry in summer. So we suffer from the dry in summer, we're looking for perenniality over the years and uh, strawberry clover is a really interesting 
uh, addition to that legume content. Uh, the herbs are covered off by chicory and uh, plantain and uh, would be fair to say from the establishment phase the chicory is quite outstanding. Uh, it has uh, a lot of micronutrients that we know it cycles particularly copper and the plantain obviously copper and selenium and cobalt in the right soil so they, they have traits of both forage quality but also animal um, characteristics. We had cover crop plants for forage such as the Milton uh, oats and the, uh, the rape and uh, radish which were used um, to bulk up the start and both those plants, all those plants have uh, played their part well. The oats to be fair are a fibre source only and we aim to sow them at quite a low rate so they didn't overwhelm the rest of this really valuable pasture mix with too much um, fibre on top of the ground when they're being grazed. Uh, and then after that we've got species like sunflowers, buckwheat, lupins, phacelia, mustard, linseed, vetch. Now the key to many of those, vetch is a really useful species as a legume contributor here both for reseeding and, um, and uh, for contribution through the grazing phase. Uh, the regrets really sit with the mustard and to be fair the radish. They don't fit the grazing rotation well and we did not start the grazing of this mix until 120 days and didn't finish the first round for 180 days. In that time that mustard flowered and set seed and that seed has now contaminated the soil for a very long time and stopped the future uses we could have of this land and put a few of our neighbours at risk with birds moving seed into the rest of the landscape. The radish is the same problem. We still have flowering radish plants here right now. The seed will have been moved around, possibly mostly the paddock, but also possibly around. And that creates a pollen, bar uh, pollen risk to any other neighbor who may be trying to do radish seed production. So there is a, so a social awareness that needs to be had when placing these plants in these really diverse and really complex mixes. Um, really looking at this, uh, there's some very powerful plants in here. We've created a nice fibre mass um, that is going to continue to break down over this winter. They're going to go through winter and this coming spring go to seed. That's going to give us the opportunity to elevate our covers pre-grazing and we're aiming for high covers and high residuals in this particular treatment. The other treatments are more intense using similar species, not quite as great a diversity but in a much more intense grazing cycle and we're going to be paying attention to what's going on under, underground as well as above ground and we'll leave you with that. Great, thanks Al, that's really, really good. This is the beginning of Agricom's venture into some diverse pasture species trials, so it's gonna be awesome to come back and see what they're like in a few more years time. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Al.